it's shade. I have returned. This is a writing tips tutorial, as you may have guessed from the title. <laughs> right, so I haven't exactly legitimately vlogged in probably six months, so I'm kind of nervous and feeling a bit awkward in front of the camera. Not in front of you, I like you. I do. I... We're cool. Today's topic is foreshadowing. There's lots of reasons for why it's important, but for me, the most important reason of them all is foreshadowing is what you need in order to make any sort of twist in your story not come off as being just a cheap trick. Not to hate on Frozen, because I know a lot of people are doing it, and personally, I have my own issues with the movie. It's by far not my favorite Disney movie. One of the biggest flaws in that movie is definitely the lack of foreshadowing when it comes to Hans. He just kind of pops up as, I'm evil, hello! And instead of coming off as really super brilliant and just like, oh, Disney's making an evil prince. This is just fabulous because this hasn't been done before. And you know, they've never shown that the first guy isn't the right one for you, Miss Princess Heroine. They haven't done that ever. This is this is just ingenious. Like if you had been able to look back on the movie and see all these clues that you didn't notice before, then it would have been, yes, that's brilliant. Not, you just dropped a bomb and it was full of maniacal princeness. I've linked below a Tumblr post by one of my YouTubian acquaintances slash friends, people who are great. She wrote a whole thing about Hans and a lot of it has to do with foreshadowing as far as Hans is concerned. So just read her article if you're interested in getting some perspective on that. But uh, foreshadowing, yes, you need foreshadowing so that you're huge. Oh ho ho! He is a psychopath! Doesn't come off as just Crap, we gotta have a villain in like, you know, 10 minutes. There are different ways to do foreshadowing. You can do it the very, like, explicit in your face way. Little did he know that things would not be going according to plan. You're just telling readers, oh, pay attention to this because this is going to become important later on. It lets the reader know what's going on, but it lets the character know nothing. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, there's some of that little foreshadowing going on, and it's used for comedic effect. So you can do it that way, you can do it the explicit way, but I'm not a huge fan of that. I am all for subtlety. I like foreshadowing where you look back and discover, oh, this little detail right here was actually really important. I just recently reread The Outsiders. There's a line in the book where he's wondering what it would feel like to be inside of a burning ember, and later on, when he's in the burning church. Well, he knows. That's foreshadowing through symbolism. I did a whole vlog on symbols, so if you want to check that out to know what I'm talking about when I say symbolism or imagery, both of those can be used really effectively as foreshadowing. But you can use symbols, you can use images, and you can also use characters' actions. Like saying something in jest earlier on that ends up happening for real later in the book. Then you look back and say, why did you say that? As if what they said earlier somehow caused what happened later. Say in The Sixth Sense, he's trying to talk to his wife and it looks like she's ignoring him, but you don't know at that point it's because because he's dead, she actually can't see him. So having a character say or do something that seems pretty mundane or ordinary but ends up being significant later on, when that, that twist finally comes, it makes you look at the rest of the story a different way because you're now seeing all of the clues that the author has provided. Everything I've talked about up until this point has to do with foreshadowing plot. If you're trying to foreshadow something um, as far as characterization goes, like whether a character is good or evil or is going to be doing something good or evil, there's other ways to do that. If you have a villain but you don't want people to know it's the villain, say they're like the murderer and you're writing a murder mystery, is you're one going to want to give people reason to believe that they didn't do it. So certain characteristics in their personality or just like actions throughout the story. But you also want to give them a reason to doubt that character. And the characters who are innocent, you want to do the same thing so that really you're, you're using the other characters in the story as red herrings. You're a communist. No, Mr. Green. Communism is just a red herring. Red herrings are very important when it comes to foreshadowing because if you write a story where you're thinking, oh, I'm gonna throw in this little detail here and here, and when the reader goes back and looks, they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, you're right, this all makes sense. The problem with that is a lot of readers are already looking for foreshadowing. They're looking for little details that reveal what's going to be happening later on in the story. So to throw them off, what you're gonna wanna do is put in lots of details. Don't like put in like, like every two seconds there's some type of symbolism thing going on, but once in a while you're gonna throw in something that might appear like it might be important later on, and it's not. Some detail that's misleading. If you don't throw in details like that and you only have the details that contribute to foreshadowing, it will be really obvious as to what is going on in your story. If your story is predictable, it will be boring, whether or not you're trying to pull off some huge twist. You want things in your story to be unexpected no matter what. Because sometimes it can be pretty difficult for people not to guess the ending of your story. So you want to make sure that there's other things within the story that keep them engaged. I find stories that try to pull off just one huge twist, they don't work out very well because then you're putting all your eggs in one basket really. Anyways, that's all I have to say on foreshadowing. I'm going to go elsewhere now. Bye! I have an Etsy store now, so if anyone wants to buy my Etsy stuff, this hat is actually for sale on my Etsy. Uh, just let me know 
<laughs> now I'm stuck. Oh, that was so stupid. Why? Great. Ah. Okay. Well, now there's a little tiny like thing. Ah. So annoying.